Hello and welcome to Generation Shadow, the epic supernatural saga that takes you through the entirety of horror history, one nightmare at a time. And tonight's nightmare, cats and kittens, it's a cool happening city. Oh yeah, get that jazz of thumping, because it's Los Angeles, 1952. Oh, let's just do it. Oh, we got some cool music. It's... It's, uh, it's very rockabilly, it's very noir, it's, it's all those great things. Uh, and let's meet, before we kind of get the game started proper, let's meet some of the players and characters who will be joining us for our first episode. As, uh, as we mentioned, we will have some very special guests joining us over the arc. Next week, Cat Regular is going to be back here. And the week after that, yeah, very glad to have Cat back for a special Woo! guest appearance. And then the week after that, the special guest will be my very own mother. Hey. Yeah. What? Let's give my mom a round of applause. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll see her uh, two weeks from now. But let's meet the players <laughs> who will be our regulars for LA 1952. Let's start. Oh, and when I go around, I want to hear who you are, who your character is, what their vibe is as we enter Los Angeles. So we'll, we'll go around a little bit later and take care of the debts and the character relationships. Let's start with Marvin. Hey. So hi, I'm Marvin, and I am going to be playing Azra, the vessel. I am a living statue in the image of the Buddha himself. For the last, I would love to say 50, but I know it's been more than that. I have spent several decades <laughs> on the bottom of the ocean floor looking for my severed stone finger. It was taken for me by Merle the dragon. <laughs> who locked it in a box and threw it in the middle of the ocean. Okay, he didn't throw it. His ship sank when he died, and it sank to the bottom. That is the it's... same as throwing it, because he had it. <laughs> <laughs> he was dead, though! <laughs> so, I did find my finger, and I am now whole. But I did not take, for instance, that my finger was the one leading me to the floor of the ocean. So I had to find my way back. So I picked a direction and walked. And for some reason, I washed up on the beach of LA. Which is weird because I started in the Atlantic Ocean on the direct opposite side of the country. How did I get here? <laughs> Good question. I mean, you went through the uh, Panama Canal. Let's turn it up. <laughs> mm. I honestly well, he, really he went down under near Australia. Uh, so. Oh. Hmm. Went across the Pacific. Yeah. Apparently. I've never been in LA, so this should be fun. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. You've been here for like maybe a month or so, or uh, as long as you think. But enough so you have like some contacts. Mm -hmm. Next up is Michael. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm going to be playing Max King, uh, also known as Maximilian Koenig, uh, from our past arc, uh, the Atlantean Vampire, who set up in uh, in Germany for a while. Uh, now. He's moved his base of operations to Los Angeles because as somebody who feeds off of emotions and all that, what better place than a place full of ups and downs and highs and lows? Ooh, it's a Los very Angeles. emotional city. So now that he's set up at his newest club, the Sapphire, <laughs> oh, now he's just kind of getting this feel not so much established as he was in Germany because he's only had about 20 years to make a name for himself here in L.A. But, uh, yeah, he's just kind of been, been there, looking for his opportunity to work his way up the ladder, one way or another. Mm, okay. <clears throat> we will see how that goes. Joining us once more, we have Patrick. Hello, I am playing uh, Jessie Booker Fontaine. She's uh, formerly Los Angeles Police Department. Uh, but she has since turned to private investigations after having a, a, a run-in with the goofballs. Ooh. That uh, left her questioning a lot of things, and partially one of those being her sanity. Um, <laughs> so she quit the force, but, you know, has kept friendly contact. Uh, and has decided to really kind of just, as a private investigator, keep tabs on the supernatural world uh, without constraints of any one particular faction weighing down on her. Uh, before she has an obligation to the mundane, so. Mm, very cool. And we will get to both the LAPD oddity squad and mm -hmm. those good time goofballs that you mentioned. <laughs> They're some very interesting characters. Yeah. And then finally. Sam would be questioning. Definitely. <laughs> joining us once more, Nick. Yep. 
I'm Nick, and once again, I'm bringing back the wizard Wraith. At least that's what he thinks he's known as. Um, as far as he can remember, his, he has been known as, as Wraith ever since he discovered the realm known as Solanisa back in when he was younger, back in Simla. Um, since then, he is he discovered what he realized was the opposite of Solanisa, which was um, Shangri-La. Spent some time there in Shangri-La, um, actually quite a few years, um, and then ended up leaving Shangri-La for a little bit and was in Shanghai in 1933, where he destroyed the, uh, an eye. The, the eye spider's, eye. spider's eye. Yes, evil yes. artifact. Um, and in doing so, discovered that his abilities quite possibly could be demonic in nature, maybe? Who knows? Are these very similar? Um, so, since then, he sort of um, traveled around a little bit more and then ended up in L.A. after hearing about the entity known as the Angel. Mm. So, we will get to the Angel as the story goes on, too. Yes. Okay, so, I'm going to do a little, little introduction to this whole arc here. In this chapter, which is entitled, L.A. by Night. Los Angeles, 1952, the epicenter of the Golden State's Golden Age. Defense contracts from the war fuel an industrial boom and grant new life to the seething metropolis surging out in Southern California, now swelled by suburban expanse and speckled with Hollywood glitz. And yet, this Golden Age has a rotten heart, a nightmare underworld threatening to rip to the surface. The LAPD, once notoriously corrupt, is under the management of the ruthlessly competent William Parker. Amongst his domain, Captain Harold Halloran's Oddity Squad, who keep the occult in line with shakedowns and frame-ups. Their biggest opponents are the Nahuals, a loose organization of shape-shifting Mexican shamans still reeling from the bloody zoot suit riots of the war years. Meanwhile, in Pasadena, science and magic intertwine in the form of the Celestial Society, who delve into the secrets of the universe under the leadership of the troubled genius, Jack Parsons. In Little Tokyo, where the Japanese residents are trying to put their lives back together after the nightmare of internment, the beleaguered American yokai attempt to forge their own path. And even the seemingly innocent world of children's entertainment, in the form of the living cartoons known as Iggy Monday's Good Time Goofballs, harbor a dark and terrible secret. It's time to explore L.A. by night. So, kind of give you a little very artistic inter uh, introduction to the world. Let's go around and be starting with, uh, with Wraith, if you're ready there, and talk about your relationships and your deaths to maybe some of the, your other players or some NPCs to help sort of flesh out this city. Um, I think I've got most of them down. I'm okay. sort of on the fence with this first one. Um, what I was originally thinking for this one, which is someone is helping me keep your keep my demons at bay. I was originally thinking of the angel for doing that, but I'm not really sure if I've actually met the angel yet. Uh, I can. I mean, you're hanging. You're in power. You're hanging out with the celestial society. The angel is this entity that they sort of worship and draw power from. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to me that you haven't met the angel before. So I can say that. I can say that's okay. okay. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. And then so the. Uh, I owe them one day. Hmm, okay. So, next one is someone is my go-to when I get into trouble. Um, I owe them two debts, and what I was thinking of was since I met Mina in Shanghai, I believe. Or, no, Mina was someone else. Was... Um, Mina did not appear in Shanghai. She was oh. actually... This is a character that uh, that's, Lucy yeah, played. That's right. I was yeah, there. you do not met me. Er, no. No, she didn't show up in Shanghai. No. She was the she was an agent of the Japanese Empire, but she was actually in Germany. Germany, that's yeah. right. Um, mm. it could be. Yeah, I was gonna think uh, I could take that on. Sure. That makes sense. You know, the rough and tumble PI would be your your. Uh, From LAPD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, who would have had a run in with the Celestial Society on one and mm -hmm. two occasions? Cool. Absolutely. I mean, you probably get called. They probably get called in for noise complaints all the time <laughs> to, uh, all right. to Pasadena. Constantly. So you have two debts on me. Okay. 
And then finally, I am helping someone keep a dangerous secret. And since I now I I know I met Johnny Kappa in, in Shanghai, so I think I've I'm not quite sure what kind of a secret I know of him. Maybe it's just the fact that he's a Kappa. I don't know. Mm, okay. Or if that's just too simple. No, that's fair. I mean, he's like like all the yokai. He can appear human to blend in with human society. Mm-hmm. So that makes sense that you know he's a Kappa. All right. Johnny Kappas. I didn't see it. Keeping the kappa. Yep. And he owes me a debt. Okay. Let's move on. Any, any, uh, we good there, Raid? No, I think that's good. Okay. Booker. Yes. So, uh, the first one to go with is you're leveraging dirt on someone. You're leveraging dirt, you're leveraging dirt you have on someone to get their help with something. Uh, I owe them a debt. I'm going to choose Iggy Monday. Uh, the Ooh. first person I had, and the person who introduced me into the supernatural world, um, due to a uh, undisclosed happenstance with the, the good time goofballs, um, specifically some, something that may be about their particular nature. Mm-hmm. So you know, that makes sense. I mean, that is, uh, that's definitely dirt. Uh, so, but what, so I owe him a debt, um, and he's helping me keep an, keep an eye on the goings-on of the sort of supernatural aspects that he is involved with. Okay. I should say the good time goofballs are kind of like, think uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit meets Bendy in the Ink Machine, if you know that video <laughs> game. Oh, dear. Ooh. Yes. They are uh, like sort of living, but they're a little bit more Cthulhu-y than, uh, I guess, demonic. Uh, but they're like living cartoons that he has brought to life that now blend into human society. In return, and they've given Iggy Monday, you know, there's his beloved popular cartoon characters, giving him all kinds of wealth and power in this uh, this deal with the devil. But now they're in our world, and, well, let's see what happens with them. So my other ones are, is that someone told me their secrets, and I haven't told anybody about them, and they're going to owe me two debts. Is anybody particularly who wants that? Hmm. So someone knows Booker's secrets, you're saying? No, so I know Booker knows somebody's here's secrets. Oh, they're gonna okay. Two deaths for that because I have kept their secrets. Well, I could probably fit that. I assume when you were investigating my club, probably. you figured out what I am, and I just kind of was like, mm. and you kept, kind of kept me off the Oddity Squad book, and that's why I owe you because yeah. I don't have the Captain Hallard down my throat. Works for me. That's fair. You definitely, I mean, as a vampire club owner, you got a lot of secrets. Mm-hmm. All so right. You too, right. Yep. And the other one is someone thinks you're protecting, they're protecting you, but it's more like you're protecting them. Um. See, I know here at this table that wants it. I was thinking probably uh, Chief William Parker. Oh, okay. I can see that. That's, um... You're kind of looking out for him as he's trying to clean up the, uh, the LAPD? And especially when, uh, I would probably know that Halloran is not the, uh, cleanest of individuals. That, um... Oh, I probably keep things off of, uh, Halloran's radar so they can't use it as leverage against Parker. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I should say, a lot of this arc, especially the, uh... Stuff related to the police department. Direct inspiration from the, the works of James Elroy, like uh, L.A. Confidential, The Big Nowhere, uh, The Black Dahlia, all of those great books. Some of their adaptations, some are less than great. Um, but the books, some of my favorites of all time, so gotta give credit to where credit is due. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, he, I owe um, Captain Parker a dead then as well. Okay. Any others, Booker? Uh, nope, that'll be it. All right, let's move on to Max King. All right. Well, my first one is someone makes sure that I get fed regularly, and I owe them two debts. Uh, what I was thinking was, well, last time I went with shapeshifters providing my my meal, so I was going to go with uh, Luz uh, Barea if she's up to the task of keeping me fed so that we don't, so I don't have to prowl. And of course, getting everybody's consent so that I don't be 
become more evil every time I drink. Mm, absolutely. I so can see that. For yeah, that, I'd that over arrangement makes sense. I'd owe her two. And she then, is the uh, the leader of the Nakawalas. And then someone relies on me for their fix, and they owe me a debt. So, either of you two gamblers or alcoholics? <laughs> nope. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I imagine the... Yeah. Uh, uh, you can't have a PI. Alcohol it's not hard drinking. Or, or alcohol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well... Well, you always have an open tab on, at, at my place. <laughs> no. And if so, so if, that's if you accept you. that, then you just owe me one debt. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. I think it's fun. I'm running out of space for debts. I always, I always have a nice bottle set aside for you with your name <laughs> on it. Excellent. I was like looking around, like. No, <laughs> probably not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh the, the, the private yeah. investigator in 1950s Los Angeles is an alcoholic. Who would have seen that Who coming? Who would <laughs> No, if you were my fix of, like, magical materials, then maybe. Yeah, that makes maybe. sense. I am not addicted to anything since... Right. Are you well, addicted, are you addicted to magical materials? <laughs> I mean, my sanctum it always lacks a key piece of <laughs> stuff, so... <laughs> always in the lookout. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Oof. Max, are there any others? Uh, the only other one is someone bears responsibility for me becoming a vampire, and they owe me a debt, which I established in the last arc as being an agent of Belial, which... I can't figure out who the hell he was. Yeah, it was a long, who, who a long... Be? Who knows? Who could that be? Man? That was a long, long time ago in Atlantis. But it may come into play. And then... Asra. Well, whoever he is, he still owes me. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for Azra, someone has convinced me to come to the city to help them with an ongoing problem. Well, since I washed up on the beach, no one really convinced me, but someone who could have convinced me to stay is an old friend of mine, hmm. if he's alright with it. Right? Sure. Yeah. I did not even know he was in the city. Yeah. It's so great to meet you again. <laughs> it's always a pleasure. <laughs> old friends. And for my second, you injured someone in the process of fulfilling an instinct. Tell them what instinct you were serving, and I owe them two debts. Uh, since I went on my journey to retrieve my finger and come whole, the first thing I did when I washed out on the beach was uproot a tree. Just to prove that I can. <laughs> Unfortunately, someone was in that tree on a mission. And I kind of apologized to her after it, and I feel so sorry for Mina, but hey, what can you do? Oh, uh, you knocked Mina out of a tree! And it's weird. You pick up a tree and the ninja falls out. What the hell? <laughs> And then, someone has a tie to my creator, or their lineage, and possesses knowledge about your origin they have refused to share. They owe me a debt. That one I'm not too sure of, to be honest. Yeah, it's a tricky one, because your, your creation, it was kind of a mystery. The you one just... thing I do know about my creator was apparently they were a dragon. I don't know how that happened, why he was a dragon doing in Tibet, but... That's all I have to, to go on. Do you think it would be Merle? Hmm? No. I think Merle would remember that, but yeah. there are, there's, still, uh, there's still two other dragons mm -hmm. that are unaccounted for, especially one who uh, mm -hmm. has a propensity of getting his sticky fingers and things. That's true. All right, well, I will mark this down. I think we all know who we're talking about here. <laughs> a certain Aleister Crowley. So, do I owe you? Do you owe me for, for that one? You owe me two debts for the first time. Oh, right? Gondra, uh, Leroy. That's what I thought. I thought you were referring to Stefan Leroy as well. I was also thinking Stefan, Stefan Leroy, Leroy, but I, oh, actually, I like I'll Alistair Crowley better, that. personally. I just thought that because he sounds like he'd be the one who's traveling. Because I think he actually yeah. did travel to Tibet. And, Probably. Um, Makes sense from the return. That, always, that links all your characters together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, well, we'll talk about it. We'll he wants Crowley or Leroy. Yeah. Okay. I like Crowley for that. So... We're actually going to do something just a little bit different. We're going to start with some individual scenes, kind of going around uh, here and there. You guys didn't quite send the order I wanted you to, but that's all good. And so you should have said something. I always said something. We almost yes. always sit like this perfectly. Yes, and that's almost. why. I, yeah. And I figured it out. 
So maybe I did actually do it right. Well, we'll see. So, um, it's okay though. We'll still work out for the games. We'll do some, we'll do some individual scenes, and you guys then we'll all kind of come together. So we're gonna start with Azra. Azra, you are in a fun, family-friendly '50s diner in Culver City. The jukebox is a blastin'. The milkshakes are mwah. I've <laughs> learned my lesson. I can't eat this. So I'm just going to pretend. Mm. <laughs> Very sad. And you are joined by two other inhuman individuals who you have, who have kind of, uh, you sort of fallen into their, their coterie soon after your arrival. It is Squeaky Squid and Sally Squid. Hmm. Uh, the squids. Yes, you are the two leaders of the Good Time Goofballs. To everybody else who would look, these are, they look kind of like those uh, mascot costumes. You know, the big old, like you're, uh, as if you would see in a certain uh, land belonging to a certain humongous media company. Sponsored by a rat. <laughs> yeah, so sort of secretly run by a rat. <laughs> they look a little, so, it's, I mean, it's a little odd. And they're getting lots of looks and lots of kids want to come over and say hello. And they'll always take their time to uh, sign an autograph or pose for a photo. But if you look a little too closely, you would realize that these strange suits of these kind of giant mascot squids, all green with the tentacles coming down, have no zippers and no seams. Yes. So, they're sitting out there um, joining you. Squeaky, as usual, because he's the star. Sort of takes, uh, takes the lead. And he's like, So, Azra, how you liking the City of Angels? It's very loud here. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say, but you know, I kind of like it. Got a little pep to it, huh? Eh, I'm not too sure what this music is for. It's new to me. They call it jazz? Something like that. <laughs> That's honestly kind of catchy, but then, eh, I prefer the tranquility of the ocean. <laughs> hmm. You were down there in the deep for a while, weren't you? Since... 1870-something, I think. Whoa, long time, long time. Well, things have changed, buddy. And pretty soon, us squids are going to be on top. <laughs> How many of you are there? Sally's like, uh, three. Then how can you be on top of anything? There's billions of people in the world. Squeaky's like, you got a point. <laughs> <laughs> but we have got a way. Sally is just very, um, cynically listening into this conversation. Squeaky's like, tell me, you ever heard about some little group called the Celestial Society? No. Yeah, all right. Not, not too surprising. I've only been here for about a month. All right, well, I'll fill you in. There are these egghead types over in Pasadena, a bunch of rocket scientists. Uh, however... They also like digging into that magic. Hmm. And that's the kind of thing that I'm interested in. Supposedly they got some mug there called the Angel. The Angel. Yeah, it's the source of their power. And the Angel is not a dragon. As far as I know, that's not the case. Damn. What the Angel is exactly? Not sure. Could be she's something like us. Whatever the case is, we want you to investigate. It's gonna be a little shindig over at this uh, beach house in Malibu, owned by some out-of-town millionaire. Celestial Society is gonna be there, and rumor has it, the angel will make an appearance. I got an invite, so I want you to go over there, figure out what exactly this angel is, and report back. Maybe it could be useful. Are we meeting in the Steiner again? Uh, yeah, we can pop back here. If you know what, or if you know what, out in, uh, out in Orange County. You know, uh, you know Mr. Monday? No. All right. Well, yeah, I forget that you're like a, like, how old are you? Somewhere between 300 and 1,000 years old. All right. Well, I forget that you just came out of the ocean like a week ago. <laughs> Iggy Mondays are creator of all that 
bum did was put pen to paper. Oh, I'm so the one who deserves your... all the credit. So he's your creator. Yeah. Or at least he likes to think that he is. And I'll just let him go right on thinking it, as long as he uh, holds up his end of the bargain. Sally's like, you're saying, you're saying too much, Squeaky. That's enough. Um, and she kind of stops Squeaky from going off on an anti-Iggy Monday tirade. <laughs> Sally's like, go to this party, see what the angel is, report back, we'll arrange a meeting, we might even send... Oh, I think it might be a bad idea. We might, we might send Cuddly Fish to talk to you. You can meet us here, or over in the studio, or in the new theme park that Monday is building for us. We'll be in touch. But here's the important thing. Don't draw too much attention to yourself. And don't let it lead back to us. If you do this, you will be richly rewarded. With what? Oh, you will soon see. Uh, and then Squeaky's like, all right, now you gotta excuse us. I have to go gonna say hi to all these kids over here. Uh. That's all right. You have a purpose. Enjoy it while you still have one. Yeah, that's one word for it. And he slides out and goes over to greet a bunch of kids. And like, hey, kids, it's me, Squeaky! And starts doing his fun uh, squiddy dance. And maybe these kids don't notice how hungrily he is staring at them. That is unner unnerving even to me. <laughs> Very unnerving. Well, that's the good time, goofballs. So, we will cut from you heading over to that. Oh, and Sally gives you the invitation and everything. It is, this evening is when the party will take place in Malibu. Good. It has directions. I need those. <laughs> <laughs> we'll swap over to Jesse Booker Fontaine. You are hanging out in, in Hollywood, at a famed restaurant. Mike Lyman's Grill, a place that you patronized often when you were in the LAPD, because it's sort of like a cop hangout. Mike Lyman always keeps the steaks and the booze uh, flowing for free when the boys in blue are around, and even provides a nice back room for private meetings. And this is one of those. Who you are meeting with is Captain Harold Halloran, the head of the LAPD's oddity squad. How's it going, Harold? Oh, you know, protecting and serving and all that. Yeah, I'm sure you are. So what's this all about? Well, boyo, we're having a little bit of trouble with something called the Celestial Society. Oh, Have you yeah. heard about them? I've, 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 I've run into them once or twice when I was on the force, and then a couple of times since. They're an interesting bunch, kind of loud. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, all those noise complaints over there in Pasadena. Yeah. Well, I think they're up to something a little more than rocketry, my boy. I wonder what that could be. Yes. More importantly, it could be an opportunity for us to involve ourselves. Okay, so then how do I fit in? I'm not part of the force anymore. Well, that serves my purposes perfectly, lad. What I'd like you to do is attend a little party tonight at a Malibu mansion owned by some reclusive out-of-town oil man. Okay. The Celestial Society will be there, and supposedly they're bringing out someone known as the Angel. Hmm. I want you to attend and see what's what, and if you think there's anything that we could uh, get them on, any dirt you could dig up, and bring it back, well, I'd be just tickled pink. It'll cost you. I'm sure it will, lad. But it always pays to have someone like me owing you a favor. <sighs> okay. All right. I guess I'll have to do, because I know you guys aren't made of money. Very good. I'll, uh, I'll see to the arrangements. Thank you. Uh, how do we get to this place and what time does it start at? Oh, just about the sunset, and I'll provide the directions. Thank you. And I must say, uh, Miss Booker, it is a rare pleasure working with you again. I do so miss your fine presence on the Force. Right. Thanks. I miss being on the Force as well. <laughs> and I, uh, as, I, as I'm about to leave the room, I'm like, um, 
Do I still have an open tab here? <laughs> Do you know the boys in blues only get you know free drinks that still extend to me? That's something you have to talk to the owner about. I thought so. Captain, I'll I'll see you after. <laughs> just kind of just stumbles out of the room. <laughs> of course, girl. I realized I called you boyo That's fine. and lad. <laughs> totally fine. I'm totally was like, okay. Whoops. But hey, this guy he calls everybody boyo. Yeah. All right. It's California. It's California. We all call each other dude, no matter what you, who you are, what you look like. Very <laughs> much. So true. Wraith, mm-hmm. we're gonna cut over to you. Mm-hmm. So, you were actually in Pasadena, in the arcane-filled home of Jack and Marjorie Parsons, okay. who are uh, the, I guess, first or president and first lady, if you will. Mm-hmm of the Celestial Society. This place, kind of a gold mine for you because it's full of cult artifacts. Mm -hmm. Strange rituals are going on. Every night they're like conjuring up, uh, they're doing the Babylon working, they're summoning the snake spirit Tronzon, all sorts of fun stuff. So, probably a bit of a... Been helpful with my research. Definitely. Right now, it's kind of the middle of the day. Everybody's getting ready for that big party in Malibu. So it's sort of busy, but you're kind of off to the side and you're doing your own thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you were approached, or what, what do you think you are doing? Just kind of on your, uh, on a little bit of your downtime at this point. Um, I think I'm actually like looking over like tomes to actually like get myself sort of caught up on times since time has sort of been a weird thing with with me since my time in in Shangri-La and at least going back and forth between Shang- Shangri-La and, and I guess the material plane. So... Mm, sort of okay. Trying to catch up on things on, on yeah. both like modern times and all these other things. So Figure I mean, out what you missed. Yeah. That's fair. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure telephones are like, how's a voice coming out of that little box? I've been... Sort of, uh, I think since Shanghai, I've been spending more and more time in in the real world. Um, so I, I do look more in like my 40s or 50s instead of like in my 20s. Oh, okay, all right. So, so you know what a telephone is. Yeah. TV, probably know that. Yeah. Cars don't scare you anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hmm, we're so this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Marjorie Cameron Parsons approaches you in this library. Mm-hmm. And so it waits patiently until you uh, get, give her your attention. Yes, how can I help you? She is a, uh, she's got like very, very intense red hair. Uh, sort of a, an, an intense kind of young woman. Nice. And she's like, uh, Mr. Mr. Wraith, a, a word if you please. Of course. Mr. Wraith, do you, tell me truthfully, mm-hmm. what do you think about my husband? About Jack? He's an interesting fellow, um, not unlike some of the people that I've met previously. Um, he is definitely very in tune with with the world, or at least with the occult. Um, I I don't quite under- understand what you were asking. Well, you're correct about Jack, but I fear he's rather like a moth being drawn to a flame. That is a possibility with some, yes. He always needs some some stronger personality. Mm-hmm. It was Aleister Crowley through his letters, but now there's someone else who I worry might be taking advantage of him. If you had the uh, pleasure, if that is the right word, of meeting uh, Grover Gosling Gaskins. <laughs> G.G. Gaskin. G.G. Gaskin. G. G. Gaskin. So you, 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 uh, do your paths cross? Um, I believe we may have met briefly, but I don't think I've had very much extended uh, talking with him. Uh, I've mostly been doing a lot of research. Well, he is hes a somewhat boorish fellow, given to grandiose pronouncements. He is a deep ambition. And I fear he might take advantage of my Jack. 
I see. Well, those who seek power often use others to get to gain it. Oh, so true. I want you to keep an eye. I can I can I trust you, Mr. Ray? As much as anyone can these days. Well, oh, so very true. I need all the help I can get. I want you to keep an eye on Gaskins during the party tonight, and especially regarding the angel. Very well. I fear that Gaskins is up to something. Hmm. If it's involving the angel, there, there could be trouble. Yes, that's, that's what I thought. Well, I'll leave you to your reading. Thank you very much. Okay. And then we're going to cut once again to the Sapphire. Uh, Max, where do you think... I mean, we, I don't know if... We, I, I've been in L.A. for like... I lived there for like two years and I went to school, but I'm by no means an expert on the complex and varied geography of that great city. So I don't... Um, but like maybe what, what sort of area in L.A. do you think the Sapphire is located in? You know what? I would like to stick it, stick it smack dab in the center of central L.A. Ooh. Possibly where... Maybe where the, I want to say it's like the Olymp, the Olympic or the Olympian Club. Around that, uh, basically just the middle of, of Los Angeles. Hmm. Right, if I got to put it geographically, above the 10, off to the west of the 110. All right. <laughs> I'm sure. Okay. Below L- the 101. <laughs> LA natives now, know all. Just talking of, madness. I know. They know all of this stuff. It's all burned to our into their brains, I'm sure. So are they kind of like near Pershing School and stuff like that? It would be about, it would be northwest of there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So if you, if you take like a, a sky shot, it's just going to be like this way. Yeah. You're good. All right. I know so, what he's talking about. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a few removed from Skid Row, but yeah. not too bad. Not Skid Row. You need to stay away. So anyways, so. I'm, I'm not sure what time it like opens, because... I don't know, is it like a nightclub? Right now it's kind of like in the uh, the mid-afternoon. He's a vampire, he never sleeps. Our doors are always open. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm sure you keep it nice and dark in there. We may not be doing business, but the doors are open. Okay. Uh, well, you have... I will say the person you got uh, tending bar is... And we kind of talked about this before. It is a sort of underling you acquired in our last arc. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> it is Lord Quincy Claggett, who is a former very high-ranking vampire. Now, he's a bartender in an L.A. club. And he is currently, he's just got a pause and wiping down the bar, doing some of his daily tasks, getting ready for the night. Uh, and you, are you like in your office? What do, what do you think you're doing as the club is kind of uh, maybe preparing to open? Just preparing to open, just kind of probably walking and just surveying if we have anybody in there yet. All right, just looking over the place. Looking over the nightly orders. Sure. See where we can improve, disprove. He, uh, he points out, he's like, um, boss. Oh, that still sounds so odd to the tongue. <laughs> we have a, a, a visitor. Uh, a young woman there in the uh, in the doorway. Forgive me for not opening the door for her. And you see that a young uh, Japanese woman. She has like short, almost vibrantly white hair, and very piercing eyes has uh, has come on in. And she sort of heads over to you. Do I know this person? Uh, you might. This is Kit Kajiwara of the. American yokai faction. Okay. They put a well. Actually, I haven't met her, so I don't know if can I put a well, face to a name. Actually, or put let's a name let's do face. that. Let's do put a face to a name. Our let's first roll, roll of the night. Let's so uh, let's see if you do know her. Plus wild. Plus wild. Oh, that is gonna be an eleven. Whoa, nice. All right, so yeah, actually, you probably have met uh, be- with her before. You know very well that she is. She's kind of the, the nominal leader of the American yokai. A lot of their uh, their elders, kind of the older spirits that were in charge of keeping power with this, fell apart, uh, went to exile, were just like destroyed during internment. And now this young uh, American-born, she's a kitsune or like a fox spirit, 
has risen to uh, to take over. So I can respect that. Yeah, so you probably have. How do you think? Like, what do you think your relationship is that you've like dealt with her before? Well, my character uh, happens to know Mina from the from the last from a couple episodes ago. So he probably just saw her and watched her after he met with Mina at some point when they when Mina came to LA. Hmm, okay. That makes sense. Maybe she kind of introduced you. So, she goes over and says, Ah, Max. Getting ready for, uh, opening, grand opening tonight? Yes, and as a Always a pleasure to see you, as always. Always a pleasure. Do wish it was under better circumstances, though. We got a little bit of a... Well, I'm worried about Mina. Okay. He motions to a booth so he can sit down. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Get my, uh, get my little pause a rest here. Mina. She's up to her old, old habits taking jobs for unsavory people. She's been hired with something big tonight at a beach house in Malibu. Some kind of fancy party a celestial society's throwing. Do you know about those fellows over there, the rocket scientists? Can't say that I do. Well... Even if it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Max, you always play your cards close to the vest. Well... I got an invitation. Unfortunately, I might stick out like a sore thumb, even in that gathering. So, if you don't mind, could you go there and make sure that Mina doesn't, into get, doesn't get into too much of a jam? I can make that happen. I mean, it's always nice to be invited. <laughs> well, you are invited. Is that, a, is that true, by the way? Like, you, you guys, you gotta be invited before you can go anywhere? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and he w- gives her a wink. Ooh, close to the vest. All right, Max. This fox, keep her er, her ears up. I'll be right. seeing you. And she uh, she heads out. So, are you guys gonna prepare before heading to Malibu for this beach side bash? I wanted to try to figure out more about this. Whoever is hosting the party tonight, this oil person, this billionaire, whatever, however much money he has. Okay. I'm trying to figure out more about him. Why don't you put a face to a name uh, okay. with Wild? I think that's still his faction. I'm actually going to use my uh, Did Your Homework, and oh, instead of cool. rolling with the faction, I roll with plus mine, because I have a negative one to Wild. Ooh. That's good. So that's an eight. Alright. Um. Uh, on a hit, I know a dangerous secret about them or their political machinations. What do I know about this individual? What am I going okay. in? I would say, what do you, what, which one do you prefer? Dangerous secret or machinations? Machinations. Okay. So, doing a little bit of research and reading some news articles, you discover Merle Von Worm. He's the owner of the Transatlantic Oil Company. Massive oil corporation. Tons, made tons of money, got even more during the war. He's got stuff like all over. Um, and he is interested, you kind of able to sort of read between the lines, see that he's not just acquiring earthly power in terms of money and political influence. But he's also interested in the occult as well. He's bringing occult artifacts like towards him. Hoarding them, if you will. Okay. And that's what you know about Mr. Merle Von Worm. He's a regular J. Paul Getty. (laughs) (laughs) All right, any other? Yeah, fun guy, that one. (laughs) I feel like Getty was as cool as he was, apparently. (laughs) Oh, I know, yeah. Hey, he made some great museums. He did. I love his museum. I love the things he left behind. Maybe in this universe it'll be like the the Von Worm. Uh, he, he totally the Worm the Museum. He totally still the Getty name. <laughs> mm-hmm. So any um oh 
Uh, Azrael, what would you like to do? I would like to purchase a map. Just so I don't get lost. <laughs> Alright, you get one of those, like, maps of the stars. <laughs> you gonna hit the streets for that? Yeah. I was gonna hit the streets. Okay, that's even better. <laughs> a map of the stars. I mean, hey, you know we're like Douglas Fairbanks. I do have the minus two, so this might... You wanna know where Veronica Lake's hanging at? I got a six. Anyone wants to help? I don't think of us know. Yeah, they're not really. You guys aren't quite together yet, so I don't see why that makes sense. And I literally know no one else in this city. So All right, I need you to man of the mole. <laughs> hmm. You you well, I don't know if you know Manny the mole. I feel like everyone knows Manny the mole. Let's be honest. I mean, you probably well, Azra. I don't know, Azra. You think he reads a lot of like newspapers and tabloid <laughs> scandal rags? No, <laughs> not at all. All right, you probably have not heard about Manny the mole. Uh. Manny the Mole Molten is like a scandal rag um, gossip columnist who I love he it. writes one. Yeah, he writes. It's called uh, the Tattle. What's this? The Tattle Tale. Yes, it's the Tattle Tale. Basically, the LA specific uh, National Enquirer. <laughs> exactly. All the uh, it's it's the well, it's, you know, it's the LA Confidential uh, sort of our version of that. Um, everything on the QT and very hush hush. As a, as a certain uh, newspaper from L.A., the movie L.A. Confidential, let's say. All right, so in that case, we'll kind of cut ahead to the party itself. Azra, you, because you didn't quite know where it was, but you know it's Malibu. There's not that many houses there, and it's, this one's really big. So it's not that hard to find, but you do show up I'm dead definitely. last. Yep. I'll kind of let you know when you arrive, but <laughs> the rest of you guys, you show up, and... This is what it is like. The swanky sort of affair where the demi mon rub elbows with the rich and famous. All in an oceanside Malibu getaway where the crash of the distant waves mingles with the lilting lounge music from the state-of-the-art hi-fi. Take a gander at the guests mingling around the angular space-age furnishing. There's Grover Gosling Gaskins, portly purveyor of substandard sci-fi pulp, getting canapé stains on his Hawaiian shirt. There's the pad's owner, reclusive Texan oil baron, Merle Von Worm, in his trademark purple vest. There's the man of the hour, Jack Parsons, looking out of place in his rumpled lab coat and thundercloud of messy hair. The angel has yet to make an appearance, but she's on the guest list too. But one thing's for sure, those appetizers look delicious. <laughs> so, what do you think... In fact, I will say, those appetizers look so good, they even got a little vampire section, maybe. <laughs> Some particular, oh, well, I mean, it's an emotional, you're an emotional vampire. Mm -hmm. You, you want to get out the snack bar just because the, the emotions about those snacks are so great. <laughs> you're there, too, and this is when you three sort of bump into each other. I'm looking for champagne. <laughs> oh, yeah, they got it. Open bar. Cool. And as <laughs> And as you're hitting the sauce, Azra, this is when you, like, slam open the door. And come on in. Not slam open. I bet oh. he just walks oh, through. Yeah. <laughs> you just smash <laughs> through the door? <laughs> Kool-Aid man style? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, you spot Wraith hanging out at the bar. And of course, Jesse and Max, you guys know each other. I, was like, well, I also know Wraith too. Oh yes, so. I know Wraith as well. Mm -hmm. Max, good, good to see you out here. It's nice to see you too, Booker. I'm, um, I'm surprised to... I mean, it's, it's night time, but generally you're at your club, aren't you? I was invited. You were invited. Well, this paper says I was. <laughs> hey, me too. <laughs> I know what you mean. Well, clinks it like a champagne glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I clink my champagne, champagne glass anyways. <laughs> and um, I met, um, this is Rafe, a friend of mine. Pleasure. I don't believe I've had it. No. I've been away and elsewhere for some time. Uh, Rafe, this is Max King. He owns the Sapphire in downtown LA. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of it yet. I don't believe I don't usually go out very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a good club. There's always it's an open seat for a friend of Booker. Thank you. Thank you very much. You can always put it on my tab. <laughs> unless, of course, unless of course you want. Azra, to Azra has emerged and joined the group here. Booker's fine. Booker's fine. I go by Booker about most things. <laughs> Doing here. Am I in the you, right place? Do you know him? He's an old friend. 
and it's Long a ago. big house. Yes, there are lots of people. What did you say your name was? <laughs> Azra. Excuse me. Hmm? Azra, over here, please. How do you know my name? I told it to her. Hello, my friend. It's been some time. I should know you. <laughs> Ooh, this is awkward. <laughs> I go by Rafe, and I don't know if you remember me. It has been some time, as I Rafe. said. It's been quite a few decades. Uh, yes. Can I put a face to it? If you think your memory is kind of dull from being a Oh, it is dull. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a little waterlogged. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if All right, let's do it. Years. That's like, what, 70 something years? About 80. About 80. 10. Years. Yeah. So yes, so, yeah. I oh, do man. actually remember. He remembers. And the memory levels me up. <laughs> Ray! Nice. Nice. Oh, Frank! <laughs> yes, I do remember you. Yes. Hello, I will give you the hug. <laughs> All right, very well. And he basically just crushes you in the <clears throat> arms of a stone statue. <laughs> you get yes. a nice stony hug. You take one faint arm. Probably. <laughs> oh, you hear my... My spine crack up. Ooh, Ooh, that was a painful crap. sound. <sighs> Sorry. Can I get you anything to drink? Champagne here is gone at the moment, but there's more. <laughs> it is all right. I've had my fill of liquids for the next 70 years. <laughs> as you <Okay>. guys... <laughs> oh, uh, we'll no, continue. Okay. All right. As you guys are in are, uh, this wonderful reunion and you're enjoying the drinks, you are all joined by a small mole-like individual... Uh, he's wearing like checkered suit, just like open or checkered uh, blazer, open collared shirt. Um, always got like the the cigarette going and the champagne class going. Uh, as he's talking a mile a minute, it is Manny the Mole Molten. Uh, being like, hey there, fellas, quite the shindig, huh? Yeah, I'd say so. It is a large gathering of people, indeed. <laughs> You, That's you run, right. You run the, uh, the that rag the tattletale, right? That's right. And you, you're a shamus, a snoop, a gumshoe. Am I right? How could you tell? <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's a very powerful deduction I see there. <laughs> Just something about the uh, the atmosphere you carry yourself in. Well, tell me this, Mister Sham or Miss Shamus. You got that nose of yours close to the ground. The only way to be closer involves your height. But yes. <laughs> was that a short joke? It was. Hey, it takes all kinds, whatever. It's fine, I get it. Anyway, you sniffed I'm out any woman, so succulent soil, dug up any diabolical dirt? Uh, I mean, what do you want for it? <laughs> Ooh. I don't, I, don't, I don't deal in free. Oh, let me tell so you my... a trade here, man. Oh, let me tell you, my friend. The scandal rag business promises buco bucks. Okay. Just let the uh, pearls of wisdom come forth. And the guilt shall flow. Okay. I'm working on some things. I don't have anything at the moment, but uh, I'll keep you in mind. All right. Well, keep your uh, keep your ear to the ground, and I'll be in touch. And how about you, Mr. King, the owner of the fabulous sapphire, truly the jewel and the crown of Los Angeles's scintillating or Los Angeles's naughty nightlife? Yes. Well. I true of, I, I am just as you are of a fan of alliteration, but <laughs> we're just trying to keep it nice and smooth. Hmm, I can dig, I can dig. The alliteration, look, let me tell you, it moves units. It makes it memorable. <laughs> oh, it keeps a, it fresh. You're a man after my own heart. Uh, by the by... Any of you guys seen the Mr. Moneybags happen to own this little pied da terre? I, I, I've, I've seen him, yeah, he's just over there wearing that very flamboyantly cut purple vest, right? Yeah, Absolutely. don't look now, but he's headed this way. Oh, I better skedaddle, I'm not exactly on the guest list, you take my meaning. So, oh, that's fine. If I remember Technically correctly, never, sir, either. <laughs> if, if you go behind the bar, was in, I'm sure he'll be fine. Merle was in similar. Back in 1878. He looks different, though. He was. Yes. It was a different incarnation. But the, na but the name Merle does ring a bell. Okay. Why don't you... I think this might be um, a let it out to extend your senses. Sure. I think that one makes the most sense for this. <coughs> I believe it's the same iteration of Merle that I know, though. It is. It's the exact yes. same. Yes. You, you don't need to roll anything. You know this guy for All sure. All of you know Merle except for me. Merle. Hmm. All right. Does the name spark well, anything for you, buddy? 
he bit off my finger and hit it in the little <laughs> Oh, no! Well... He bit off your... F- I would say, I mean, maybe... Ten, though. Azra, maybe, maybe Wraith-like fills you in because he definitely recognizes Merle. Oh. Merle. I haven't heard that name in some okay. time. Made a stone. I believe our good friend Merle is the same one who took off your finger. Merle. Yes, I do remember Merle. Memories of Merle. <laughs> <laughs> not, the more you know. <laughs> not at all. He's doing quite well for himself since then. How is he still? Oh yes, dragon. dragon. <laughs> he's a dragon, after all. I'm wait, like, hold on, hold on, wait. What's, what's this about a dragon? <laughs> Dragons exist. You see her reach into her her, 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 <laughs> her coat pocket and pull out a flask and just take a deep swig, just like. That's the appropriate response. That is usually. <laughs> uh, are there a lot of them? I do not know. Fuck. Would I know how many there are? Maybe you have a faint idea, but maybe not. You can't really can't give me the. You probably can't give the exact number. I have met at least three. Yeah, at least probably, three. You've, you've hung with a lot of them. I know. No, 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 I'm sure. Okay, 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 okay. Go ahead. Okay. Say like my character about to freak the fuck out. <laughs> no. yes. From my knowledge, I believe there are very few nowadays. That's good. We'll talk. I'll okay, let you I, from my knowledge, I believe they have a way of reincarnating themselves. Hmm. Um, hopefully, it's um. Something that isn't destructive, but I, if, if dragons are a real thing, then I'm sure it's absolutely just devastating. I would love to meet one again. One well, of well, apparently things. he's here. Wait, wait, In fact, he is, is making a beeline right towards you guys. <laughs> now this is fortuitous. Quiet. So, Merle pops over, and um, he notices you, Max, because, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, With the extra glass of champagne ready. Yeah. Well, Mr. King, thank you, sir. I do always appreciate a nice libation from a friend. Mm-hmm. Then again, it is all my booze to begin with. <laughs> he slurps like super loudly. <laughs> that sounds great. Right. <laughs> now, well, last time it was my booze. Ooh, very true. Now, my memory, it ain't what it used to be. I'm just a simple... Country uh, oil baron, but I don't recall putting your name on the guest list of, uh, of this little party. Then again, I guess that never stopped you before, did it, Maximilian? No. But I can tell you that an invitation to your party does cost quite a pretty penny, especially when it's not yours to begin with. I can see that, uh, and he kind of draws a little closer to you. Tell me, you ain't you ain't still raw about what happened in Berlin, are you? That was a lifetime ago. Exactly. Things there, they just got a little bit out of hand. Sometimes, uh, let's just say my feelings got the better of me. Well, you always have an open tab at the sapphire. I might just take you up on that. I'm always uh, looking for friends. I mean, I don't know if you read the papers or so on, but. You own a little bit of club, you own a little club. I own a multinational oil corporation. So, I guess we're both businessmen in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the... Always looking for opportunities to expand. All right. Well, I'll keep it in mind. And he kind of looks over to the rest of you. Now... <clears throat> Time has been good to you, my friend. Have we met? You may not remember me, or at least... A version of you has met me. Maybe I just got one of those faces. Hmm. Possibly. Hmm. Do you have any memory of Simla, 1878? Hmm. Do you think... Would he, 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 but I don't know if he would share to say when it. He, uh, when he becomes... When he realizes he's a dragon, he has all of his memories uh, from the past lives. Oh, okay. Uh, no, he does not want to care. He does not want to share that information. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because he realizes who these two people are. <laughs> he probably like the nut and well. <laughs> they got a camp <laughs> job. So you two, uh, you must be mis- You know, maybe you're thinking of Gary Cooper. I get mistaken for him a lot because I'm so good looking. Well, that is a possibility. Although is I don't this think this I met this Cooper. Is this the same person, Rafe? <laughs> Well, he acts the same. He does. <laughs> but I'm not so sure of the face. I would say... I'm not sure who you mean, friend. And by the way, who are you? My name is Azra. 
I am a stone statue of the Buddha. <laughs> well, you just go on and lay it all out there, don't you? Hmm. Well, it seems our old friend doesn't wish to remember us, or at least divulge any information. Rabbi, do you remember doing this to me? <laughs> and he takes off his finger. <laughs> he laughed. That's a cute. Uh, that's a cute party trick there. Hmm. He doesn't seem to. Remember. Yeah, I can't say I do. Why don't you put that figure back on? You don't want to be scaring anybody. Could I figure him out? Yes. Yeah. Let's finger him out. Are you <laughs> <laughs> is Booker dressed in PI gear or is she dressed up for the occasion? Ooh, that's, a <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, she's probably very much wearing uh, like a suit that maybe have one may have been designed for men, but has been cut down to their form, to her form. Um, okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's very uh, yeah. Marlena Dietrich, you might say. So yeah, I rolled a ten. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Question. Yes. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. What? Yeah, I guess. Well, uh, I have so I, I'm holding two. What's that? I have an invitation. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I guess the first question is, what does your character worry might happen? Hmm. I guess in terms of sort of... I think he's worried that you guys will disrupt his plans. Hmm. You couldn't tell he's totally surprised. Maybe Max's not that surprised, because he kind of knew you were in the city, but you two in particular, he's very surprised to see you there, even though he's trying to uh, to fake it. He's like, oh, he when he sees you guys, he's like, oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> surprised he hasn't, he hasn't learned that I've been hanging out with the society. Yeah, I mean, he's like, he doesn't really live in L.A. He, like, travels all over the place, True. so he probably hasn't been in this city for that True. long. Okay. Um, it is his house, but he owns, like, so many. I think you can ask uh, two more. I can ask one more. One more. Yeah. Um, sure. Why not? What's uh, what's he hoping to to get from from this party and working with the society in general? Hmm. You realize it is more arcane power. Once again, he's adding to his hoard, of course. Mm. Well, I assure you, my, my old friend, Merle's we don't wild. intend to Merle's wild. Yeah. get in the way of any sort of yeah, wishes you you have in terms of gaining. Oh, perish the thought. You just stay here and enjoy the party. And, uh, yes. you, miss, you're the only one here who, uh, I don't recognize or seems to recognize me. What's what's your handle? Um, Jessica Fontaine. I um, I'm here on behalf of Captain uh, Harold uh, Hollerin. Oh yes, I know. I, I know. Uh, no Harold. Uh, he unfortunately couldn't make it tonight and has asked me to be here instead to extend a uh, welcome to the city to you. Well, it's that's, uh, that's a right pity. I'm a regular donator to the uh, policeman's charity ball and all that. Of course. We appreciate it. We really do. Well, you guys just do such a wonderful job out there. It's the least I can do. Tough city. That it is. And, uh, well, I do hope you enjoy the party. And if I can, uh, hopefully I'll, I'll remember, uh, I'll search my memory, see if I can figure out where I, where I met you before. But right now, I just can't put my finger on it. <laughs> yes. Keep doing that. Would you, would, you, would you say you'd give, a, you'd give an arm for that information? Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta hand it to you. <laughs> Goodbye. It is all right, Merle. I forgive you. Hmm, Merle's a little surprised at that. <laughs> he, like, stops so for a right. moment, and then he keeps on going. Uh, so at this moment... Yeah, I think after that conversation... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, looking around for Gaskins and sort of trying to... Ooh, you know, okay. Demo, ...do my work, sort of. Would that be... Sort of, I mean, and, and at the same time, with my conversation with Merle, I'm sort of also looking around the, the place, yeah, investigating, seeing 
what he's gained. You could investigate to like look kind of below the surface. I'm not gonna make you roll to locate Gaskins. He's, he's pretty noticeable. So yeah. Oh, this, this isn't really. I'll, this isn't for that. This is like to, mm-hmm. to investigate a place of power. Yes. yes. And this is with uh, Wild. Yes. For Merle's mansion. Just now it's eight. Merle's the Merle's Malibu <clears throat> Beach House. That's kind of. Merle Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he would. Him. He would. Uh-huh. It's a neat. Okay. Uh, I would say the house itself probably isn't that magical, mm-hmm. but there is a vastly powerful magical entity here. Hmm. It's kind of like just pulled up in the garage and is being being let in hmm. as uh, as we speak. Anyone else want to want to check anything before? Uh, uh, hmm? Yeah, I wonder one of the party kind of try to listen in conversations of the celestial society and try trying to pick information as I go to maybe get a better hint of what's happening here. Kind of say investigate a place of power. Kind of. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Uh, roll with power though, because you are investigating the yep. celestial society. Uh, that's a seven. Hey. Okay. Just good enough. Just good enough. So you realize that you don't know too many details, but you can see that a lot of them are like they're like that that Gaskins guy, kind of an a hole. <laughs> <laughs> but other people are like, but they're they're divided over him. He does have his supporters as well. People are like, what the the wisdom he's uncovered and like the way he supposedly talks to ancient like long dead philosophers and he meets their ghosts and can conjure these like ancient wizards and sorcerers very impressive can I put a face to a name for Gaskins uh yes so you can roll with uh, power that. he's yeah. currently just like finished up with the appetizers not so good complete mind fart apparently oh no well, that was with have... power that's yeah. a negative one so yeah that's All right. a two you still get to mark it at least mark the potential yep. mm-hmm. that's a guy with a lot of G Yes. <laughs> GG Gaskins. Um, guess, so, oh, Asrin? Yeah. I guess I'll try and find information about this angel that I'm trying to find. Sure. Do you want to, like, chat somebody up, or do you want to try and, like, kind of spy on the angel as she's coming in, or what's uh Man, I want to chat someone up. I'm sure that's going to go right <laughs> fine. Let's do it. <laughs> Are you talking to uh, Molten, to Gaskins, to somebody else? Uh, Jack Parsons himself is here. His wife, Marjorie Parsons, is here as well. Yes, let's talk to the both of them. Okay. Yeah, they're kind of together for the moment, just like kind of um, both enjoying some drinks. Uh, so you pop by, what do you, uh, how do you, in, your, in the charming Ezra way that we all know and love, how do you introduce yourself? All right. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ezra. Do you know if there's a being called the Angel here? Um, Marjorie clams up. Parsons goes, like, right up to you. Like, I don't know if you can... Can you feel discomfort? No. All right. Well, it would be, if you could feel uncomfortable, it, this would be uncomfortably close. And he's like, how do you, how do you know of the angel? Cartoon characters told me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> um, he's like... <clears throat> he's kind of walking around you. He's like, was it, uh... Let me guess, Betty Boop? Yes. <laughs> I knew I couldn't trust her. Boop boop a doop. It's some powerful arcane ritual that she's casting. <laughs> <laughs> I used to watch. I would sit in those movie theaters, watch uh, watch her, uh, watch her cartoons before the pictures. I always like the sci-fi ones, you know, Buck Rogers, that kind of thing. Voosh, wham, the moon, sc- stars, space. Commander Cody loved him too. All of that jetpacks. That's my dream, to build a jetpack for myself and soar amongst the stars. Where was I? Betty Boop, yes. <laughs> She's a witch, mark my words. Yes. So, Betty Boop told you about the angel? I don't know if anyone realizes, but Ozer is actually lying to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Just... I didn't know that he could actually lie. <laughs> you might need to do... I don't know, I mean, he's... Maybe I'll make this like a lower difficulty roll, but you might want to do a mislead distractor trick. Mm-hmm. Or also probably figure, because like Parsons is a little kooky, but he probably realizes Betty Boop is not actually talking to you. Okay. 
he might think you know, it's like the universe is speaking through Betty Boop or something. But let's so give give it a roll here. <laughs> He'll believe that you heard it from her at least. Okay. So. Oh damn, snake eyes. <laughs> All right, he catches wise. He goes right back to you. He's like, that's pretty bad, isn't it? I take it back. Betty Boop is a charming Fleischer Brothers creation. She is also a TV character. Yeah. But she isn't. Last time I checked, she doesn't actually talk to the audience. She's not like that uh, that clown off Howdy Doody. Wait, what's the one we're talking? Wasn't there someone who talked to the kids in Howdy Doody? This is way before my time. I don't know why I'm asking you. About that. <laughs> this is before. This is like you know, golden age TV. Nobody would know this. Golden age. I know. Pre- Please, you forgot about Lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is like you know, fifties kids TV. I'll tell. I'll take a look at that. But the, but the rest of the thing, we're like. I remember reading in some metaphor of like some some kids show make a deal of like you know Blues Clues style, talking to its young audience. Um, anyway, Betty Boop's not that. Where'd you hear it from, really? You seem to have a thing against cartoon characters. Do they do something to you? Maybe I got a reason. But hey, don't change the subject. Who told you about the angel? Hmm. Cartoon characters. <laughs> you be more specific. Not particularly. They are what they are. You can't or you won't? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Marjorie goes over and calms him down a little bit, and he like you know, runs his hand through his hair, and he's thinking a little bit. And he's like, if they are who I think they are, I urge you, Mr. Azra, do not trust them. Hmm. There are creatures beyond the kin of man, a it- vast nameless evil. Did they do something to you? Maybe I'm afraid of what they're going to do. Anyway, it's nice meeting you. I'm gonna go bring the angel in. Ah, uh, so you do know where it is. Yeah, she's she's uh, outside. I'm gonna bring her in. Cool. Can I go with you? Mm, you gonna do a persuade. <laughs> I mean, I did just meet you. Please. And I let the visage roll down a little bit so he sees my unmoving face. Ooh. It is very imperative that I meet with the angel. Okay. And I'll use hideous visage on him. <laughs> and that is a ten. Nice. I don't know if he's necessarily scared because I don't know what scares him. When he realizes what you truly are, he's much more intrigued and he's like, ah, I think the angel will want to see you. Come on, let's go get her. So he heads on out to get the angel uh, to bring her inside. We'll, we'll check back in a mm-hmm. second. Meanwhile, I will say the three of you are actually approached by G.G. Gaskins. Hmm. So maybe you like you kind of reunite, uh, not the snacks table, but around the drinks table, or would it be the dance floor? No. Drinks, I, don't, I don't know if anybody's drinks. dancing here. I don't know if you can, can you really dance to some like smooth hi fi sounds? Perhaps. Oh, we could. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting so. night so far. Hey, where's Azrat? Not with. I don't look around, I don't see them. Okay. I. Hmm. Well, he was there. I guess we'll. That's I mean, how, how, how do you lose a seven foot tall stone golem? <laughs> Shrug. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. That's why I'm, I'm asking because I don't know drink. either. <laughs> I have a pretty high tolerance, and I've maybe drank like, two bottles at this point, but I'm not that drunk. As you are saying this, Gaskins appears between you and like puts his arms on your shoulders. No. <laughs> he is a sort of like plump um, guy wearing like he's wearing like a you know Hawaiian shirt uh, for the party kind of thing with like. Full, thick white hair. He looks like a sci-fi writer. Starting to turn white. Big mustache. Looks a little bit like a Philip Seymour Hoffman, if you, <laughs> if you will. Um, he's like, ah, gentlemen and one lady, my fellow travelers into the river on this long river of the night. <laughs> Greetings. Tell me, how do you find this party? The soiree? Quite lovely, actually. I concur. We help you with something, Mr. Um, 
Gaskins, sir. Grover Gosford Gaskins, at your service. The, the, the science fiction writer. Ah, marvelous. Tell me, are you familiar with my oeuvre? I'm familiar with some of your work, yes. Oh, of course. Well, I must ask, what do you think? <sighs> I'm more into fantasy, personally. <laughs> and this, this is, there's an author, um, Tolkien? Oh, yes, yes, over there in England. Yes. Um, yes, we're, we're old, uh, old friends, oh. uh, J.R.R. and I. Where I'm over there in, uh, in Blighty, I, I swing over to um, Tolkien's house, and we 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 relax together. It's it's just a, a wonderful little hangout session. Sounds wonderful, indeed. And uh, you, Mister Wraith. Yes. Okay. I've seen you around the Celestial Society, haven't I? I do sometimes go there when my research is needed. I think we are two peas in a pod, as it were. Twin seekers of eternal truths. Tell me. Mm, I certainly hope it's more than a possibility. Are you as intrigued by the angel as I? She is a very interesting entity. I, will, I would agree, yes. I wonder, what do you know about her origin? Uh, could I put a face to a name and see if I know anything about her origin? Yes, but you don't, of course, have to tell them. Yes. Nope, snake eyes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Second one. Ouch. Tonight. I know, not so lucky. I'm afraid I haven't learned much. She's very helpful, though. She is. I do worry about her keeper, Mr. Parsons. One must always worry when such a vibrant conduit of energy is kept in the hands of one man, especially one, shall we say, hands that are as shaky as those belonging to Monsieur Parsons. Hmm. Yes, it is troubling, isn't it? Um, I would also like to figure him out as uh, Ooh, okay. Marking power, because I, after I didn't mark that. Uh, Alright, let's see what I get. That's better. <laughs> Uh, that's an eight. So, I hold one, so I get to ask him one question. Um, yeah, sure, why not? What is his beef with, with our, our good friend? Mm, okay. It's definitely, he's not showing an outright, but he thinks he should be in charge. Mm-hmm. Well, it's often those... Who... Sorry, I lost track of thought. Um, I would say it's some of those with with personalities who are less out of the way that tend to be more useful. True, true. We all serve the gods of knowledge in our own ways. But you, sir, I believe it is good Bacchus, the god of merriment, who you serve, with that wonderful club, the Sapphire. <laughs> More partial to Dionysus myself. Ah. So good to know that you are amongst a fellow lover of the classics. I see some inspiration works throughout your works as well. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> you are also a fan? Tell me. What is your favorite of my many volumes? As I, my favorite is the next one. The <laughs> one I haven't read yet. Oh, well said, sir, well said. He's seductive. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. <laughs> no, that's, that's just what, that's always what an author wants to hear. Because mm -hmm. it's always like, what I just wrote, what I'm, what I'm writing now. Or what I'm writing. Unfortunately, it's true, just Ooh, like, Ooh, what we're yeah. next, people are gonna love that. What I just wrote, mm -mm, no thank mm -hmm. you. Well, I look forward to seeing you a little bit later, Mr. King. Now, I shall bid you all farewell. Have a good kinda... night. Tell me. He's... Oh, before he goes. Mm -hmm. Are you, uh, 
Are they bringing the angel in, or is there a separate meeting for that? Uh, I would say at this You're moment. Talk of the angel. Yeah, this is when the angel actually enters. So, Azra, you and Parsons are walking in with her. You kind of have to hold her hand a bit and sort of guide her. There he is. Yeah. The angel is strange. She's not exactly what you expected. She's wearing very, very old-fashioned clothes. A sort of Puritan garb. Something that you would see only in the history books. But it's hard to make them out because she is covered in this celestial bright glow. She seems kind of like stunned. Every, every movement she makes is a slow or hesitant. And also, you look at her from the right angle and look into her eyes. You can see a sort of darkness flickering there. Hmm. Slowly puts on some sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, pretty bright. It really doesn't affect me at all. Very refulgent. Mm-hmm. And uh, for those, I don't know if there's anybody who was a long-time Generation Shadow Watcher, I think a lot of you guys... Yeah, I know exactly who this is. Yeah, I think all of you but Michael uh, were there for our very, very first art. But yes, this is indeed Goody Pruitt. Um, uh, this is who is Kat's very first character from our very first art. I don't think she would have liked Max that much. Probably not. <laughs> no, oh god, no. Big she time of it, yes. No. Huge vampire hunter. Trying to kill Claggett immediately. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she was not a very nice person. No. I think great she kind character. of... She, not a great she person. barely tolerated my character. <laughs> yeah, the werewolf. Yeah. I think she got some kind of redemption yeah. as, the, as the end of the arc. Oh, um, the end of it, yeah. Mm, yeah. Definitely. Now she's in sort of like a trance, though. Hmm. Oh, okay. So, she appears in the center of the room and is like looking around. A little, uh... A little worried, and Parsons is like, There she is, everybody. The angel. Is it right to be parading her around like this? I would say, do you, did you want to ask this, like, as you're bringing her in, or like, are you yeah, asking it? as we're bringing her okay, in. Okay, so kind of... Rewind just a bit. Um, Parson says, "You might, you might be right, but people expect certain things. They just, if we're just doing rituals and reading dusty old books, it's not interesting. They want their pizzazz." As all of this is happening, can I take a look at the crowd? and investigate a place of power, but looking for more of my own kind? Uh, okay. Or any anything, with, like, just looking for the telltale signs of a vampire or a werewolf or something like that. Sure. You can roll with... I guess it would be night. Mm, I have a zero at night. So, yeah, no, that's a three. Okay. Not that you can tell. The energy, like the aura from the angel is such is so great that you're kind of blinding for your arcane senses. So you're not quite sure what's there. Can I see if I can figure out what is keeping her in that state? Uh, sure. Sort of sense like what it is? Yeah, maybe this would be let it out, yeah. extend your senses supernatural or otherwise. Okay. So, you can do that, and then you gotta mark that corruption. <clears throat> All right. Nice. Oh, just one, one second. Let me get this answer here. Okay, yeah, yeah. She's actually kind of like, she's a vessel. Not in the same way he is, but like, hmm. there is a powerful entity sort of inside of her hmm. that she's like trapping inside of herself. Um, I wanted to um, try to keep an eye out for trouble because immediately seeing this person as bright as they are, it triggers something in uh, in Booker as that this is danger. I don't know much about the supernatural world, but something this bright with this much awe striking ability is not okay. Uh, so she wants to take it. She's gonna try to snoop about a, snoop about a bit before things pop off. Roll plus mine. It's an eight. 
take that. Um, let's see. So you can well, extend your senses. So, or you... so as part of it is, I keep an eye out for trouble. I roll with mind uh, on a seven to nine. Hold one. Um, like the hold, uh, you know, one for eight, one for one. I get to ask a question off of the list I have here, and that is, uh, what here is the greatest danger to me? <laughs> All right. Well, I would say, in fact, as you are, as the angels brought out, you may be towards like the back of the room. You look out. They have like kind of a pool on sort of a raised platform. The whole house is kind of like on a, uh, sort of on the bluffs overlooking the water. Mm -hmm. You look back at this pool, and the water in it is starting to spin and spin, going into a whirlpool. And in fact, this is what happens next. The water in the pool starts to spin, forming currents that swirl and dance before breaking free. The creature that emerges belongs in a hophead dream. Faded leather jacket green skin, an elongated crocodile snout, and oversized claws. He rides in on an enchanted wave, and he's not alone. A living shadow in faintly feminine shape leaps in through the window, a curved sword like lightning, slashing down as a constellation of throwing stars spin outward. In the distance, numberless bat wings flutter. What do you do? I think all that, uh, Book or do something, and then we'll do the little. We'll we'll roll initiative, as it were, as this entire party uh, as things pop off. Uh, my first thing is I'm going to yell, "Wraith King!" Pull my gun and cock back my my uh, snub nose revolver and take a shot at the alligator creature. Okay. Watch you roll two. Shoot Johnny Kappa. <laughs> and favorite I, character. I you're recognize gonna... that as Kappa. Uh, I would say when you turn, yeah, you realize it's him. Oh, shit. <laughs> they appeared out of nowhere, out of a pool of water. They're uninvited guests. <laughs> First reaction is to fire, and then get the hell out of here. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to use my expert marksman, so I'm going to roll with mine instead of blood, uh, which brings it to an eight. Um, All right, which one on the top are you picking? Uh, I'm gonna take something from them. Their elements, of, their elements of surprise, so oh, that yeah, it's gonna definitely. draw immediate attention to them. Um, and I'm gonna choose. I'm gonna find myself in a bad spot as I'm the closest to it, with a crowd of people between us and them. So, I would say so. He lands next to you. That's that's two harm. Um, okay, yeah, he is. He's shot and like kind of spins to the side. The tidal wave smashes against the uh, like the all glass wall they have there. But one of the windows is broken now. Yeah. <laughs> that shot oh, there. yes, definitely. Yeah. And it's, so water is like surging in, into this apartment. Kappa is right in front of you, pulling back his claws as some blood's running down his green, scaly skin there. Um, I want everybody to roll to keep your cool. Plus spear, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Anybody get a 12 or higher? Wow. 10 to 12? What'd you get? <laughs> no 10 to 12. Uh, 8 to 9. 9. 9. nine. <laughs> Alright, who's the higher spirit there? I'm guessing that Max well, no, I, zero. I roll with blood. Not oh, 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 because I'm cold blooded. Yeah, what's your blood there? Well, we've always used spirit before, so. Oh, okay. Well, spirit's same. fine. Just so, the... I'm a zero at spirit, which puts him. No, I'm also a zero at spirit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna make an executive decision. Max King is going first. Yeah. <laughs> then Jesse well, if we're going with blood, it's two to negative one. So yeah. <laughs> then Jesse Fontaine. Yeah. She uh, anybody get a? You got a five? Yeah, Six. Got a five. It does not smell like Teen Spirit. So since we're going into battle, I'm gonna roll with blood as well for my other moves. That's All right, as is going last, seven. and Wraith is in the middle. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, so we're gonna break somebody's neck. Right. <laughs> okay, so. Max, you have Mina, the immortal ninja, has leapt in through the um, the doorway there, mm -hmm. and is like she sent he sent out a bunch of throwing stars just to kind of not really to kill but to stun and to stabilize the room, and she is like making towards uh, the angel. Parsons is like hauling the angel back, trying to get her out of there. You also have, of course, Johnny Kappa's corner, this guy. And there's lots of fluttering wings coming in the distance. They'll be there really soon. Well, 
I have a for the seven that I just rolled for my going into battle. I have a hold two. So for that, I am going to. Would you say that she's? I need to get to her, or she's going towards the path, and I could just intercept her if she's going towards. You can intercept her. Okay. Uh, then on that, I will. One of the choices: kill, disable, or disarm. To which, since he knows Mina, he will disable her by grabbing her and pulling her into a hug and coming face to face with her and asking her, quite honestly, what are you doing here? Hmm, okay. But holding her down so she can't. Oh, I see. All right. This is totally, dis- I mean, she's... This it's might- stopping her forward movement. Yes, this will lead to a conversation, I think. But yeah, she is, for the moment, totally paused. All right, this ninja is pausing her attack. Her sword is like at the side now. She's being held by Max. Jesse, you have an angry Kappa coming towards you, being like, I just wanted cucumbers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, didn't know you were an invited guest. Sorry about that. Click the gun back, and I'm still kind of holding it in the general direction. Um, I guess I'm, I'm, I want to try to figure them out. I first instinct was pull a trigger. Now it's like, okay, what's going on here? Uh, wow, that's an eleven. Nice. Uh, so get the hold two. So, um, what's the Kappa trying to hoping to get from Merle and the Celestial Society? You realize that definitely the angel is this Kappa's goal. Okay. Um, and then I guess, um, how can I put this character in my debt? <laughs> cucumbers. cucumbers. <laughs> He's crazy about him. I said, I said, you know, I, you can get cucumbers, just, uh, not here. I'll, get, I'll bring you some, but this, what? Is a pri- this is a private party. You shot me and now you're going to give me cucumbers? If you leave, sure. What gives? <laughs> Hmm. It's You're... a private party. Get out of here. <laughs> I don't want to kill anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you should have shot me. It was reflex. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Ouch. You're going to have to persuade. <laughs> and then I'll kind of move it on. Okay. A roll plus start. Wow, it's a 12. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Cucumbers, you say. Yeah. All right. Towards the kitchen. Right there. <laughs> There's a kitchen. There probably is a kitchen. Like, hey, let's let's defeat this direction. Let's get you out of here. <laughs> I'm, I'll I'm, meet I'm, you there. I'm, I'm basically a gunpoint getting him out of the scene. <laughs> he starts. He smashes through the window and dashes for the kitchen. Okay, I guess. Not I'm worried about the angel anymore. <laughs> he's, he's on the hunt for cucumbers. Does he owe me a debt now? <laughs> I'm gonna say he finds cucumbers and then yes. Okay. <laughs> so at this point. Uh, the wings have closed in, and the Tengu, who uh, raped, you remember this from Shanghai, they caused you so much trouble there. These, like, gargoyle creatures with, like, red wings, uh, sort of thin, bird-like red faces. Mm-hmm. The Tengu are swooping in, coming in through the window, and just, like, laying waste to everything, trying also to reach the angel. Parsons has now gone to the door, and is, like, bringing her out. Where is, where is Gaskin right now? Uh, Gaskin's? Yeah. He's trying to kind of disappear into the chaos. If you want to find him, I'm going to need you to roll an investigative place of power to see what he's doing here. Would that be with... Uh... With power. Oh, okay. Ten. Okay. Uh, so you can see Gaskin's is like... A bit off to the side, sort of hiding behind maybe the... Uh, does he look, like, worried or surprised that these creatures are here? Uh, he does not. Hmm. In fact, you can see that he's sort of, like, whispering an incantation and kind of doing some arcane gestures, like, under the table. Interesting. Okay. Um, with that, I'm going to... Alright, let's do that. So, seven, seven, holding 
three. And yeah, let's let's fill out this this corruption. Yeah. Already? Yes. <laughs> I, I had corruption from from all of the one shots. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You, this character was this in two one shots before, one shot, so. Yeah. Are we are we gonna see Wraith turn evil halfway through? Interesting. We will see. Yeah. Um, we are third character for corruption. Yeah. So I'm adding dark arts. Nice. Yes. So whenever I unleash with magic I, or psychic energy, I have more corruption and to roll with spirit instead of blood. So, anyways. Um, Very useful one. So, with that. Um, so it looks like all, all of the attackers are sort of busy. Well, the Tengu aren't that busy. They're well, about to come yeah, in. Yeah, but... Yeah. Um, Kappa has been dispatched and to the kitchen to get cucumbers. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> Max has taken care of uh, Mina. Mina for right now. Um, <laughs> I love the name Kev. Just like, I can get cucumbers. <laughs> yeah. Um, What's going on I'm here? going to spend one of my hold to use Veil so and turn myself into this hole momentarily and head towards... Um, Cucumbers. Mr. Gaskins. <laughs> what was that? Sorry? So I'm, I'm going to spend one of my hold to turn myself invisible and head towards Gaskins. Ooh, okay. You wink out of existence <laughs> and you sneakily approach Gaskins. Mm -hmm. Azra, what are you doing? Well, first, I'm going to try and resist my instincts to serve the power, the powerful, and resist my orders from the squids. And that, we'll see what I do next. And uh, that's a six. Don't know if anyone can help me with this. Maybe if you like, maybe your friendship with Wraith. I would say someone could try, because like they're, your newfound friendship with one of these characters could help sway you away from the squids. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what, like, what are you currently doing is the question, because I'm currently like guiding a kappa to the kitchen with my pistol out. I'm basically like, just standing there, hesitating a little bit on what to do. Um, so I would say I'll I'll do it, and right before I wink out of into invisibility, I'll be like, Gaskins is doing something. Gaskins. He's he's trying some sort of incantation. We need to help. We need to do something about that. Hmm. Hmm. So maybe that message from an old friend could help put you, help help you make up your mind to do the right thing. Hmm. Yeah. And so I will with a uh, wild. 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 I keep rolling wild and power. I know. Uh, six Ten. Ten. Okay. So that basically makes up my mind. Not going to talk to the angel. I'm going to protect people. Like I want to do. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go after Gasket then. Okay. Don't you have the mark of redemption for that? Yes. Hey. Hey. The... Yeah, cool. All right, so you charge right towards Gaskins. He like kind of breaks off in his spell and looks over at you, and he's like, "What? A, what exactly are you doing, sir? What exactly are you doing?" <laughs> I believe I asked you first. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's he's like, "Oh, this is just a little uh, nervous wringing of the hands. Nothing mm -hmm. more." That is not true. Are You're you reading something into it? Are you saying that I'm doing something untoward? Is that what you're saying? I have been told to stop you. <laughs> you need to back the fuck up. <laughs> yes! No. No! This is what I want to do. You are doing something dangerous, and I must stop it. And I'm gonna, like, go after him. <laughs> oh, oh, man. All right. Unleash an attack? Yep. Don't know if there's anything else. Like, tear it down, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he's a person. I guess it'd be, yeah. I guess it'd be at least an attack. So yes. Yeah. You could like check him out the window, and we'll say what this what this is, depending on what you can do. That's really good. All right. So, Are you going to do terrible harm on him, or take something from him? If I do terrible harm to him, can I just like knock him out? Yeah, I can see that. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to punch him in the face with my stone fist. <laughs> oh for man. For four, four damage, four arm. <laughs> Oof, yeah, he goes right. Why, why did I say oof? <laughs> that, that's an oof moment. I know. It's an oof. <laughs> Roblox oof. He is oofed right out. So. <laughs> he's been oofed to the next dimension. Yeah, he's just like, and collapses onto the back onto the ground. 
This so whatever spell he was going to do has paused. Right now, the Tengu rush around him, hit the, hit the house. They're like flying around, knocking stuff over. The guests, as well as Parsons and the Angel, have like made it outside. They're all getting to their cars, trying to escape. Uh, but it is pretty chaotic, very hard to see anything. I'm going to need... Let's have Azra and Booker roll to keep your cool. Let's see if you take some damage from the Tengu's claws. Nope. I rolled a five. Okay, that's going to have a bad thing. Roll oh, yeah. and eat. Okay. You take faint harm. Okay. As you just get some, like, gouges in your side on these claws. Unfortunately, you take faint harm. You have to, uh... Grievous. Yep. As you are deeply... One point of Grievous? Yeah. As you are, like, the claws, like, just gouge into you, and one Tengu, or uh, actually a pair of these guys, is hauling you out, like, of the room into the air, trying to take you into, up into the air to, like, drop from a great distance. Great. Yeah. Those of us who survived the Shanghai experience know this is sort of how they, uh, how they handle it. They like picking you up and dropping you. Letting gravity do the dirty work. Otherwise known as the Generation Hero Special. <laughs> oh, man, so true. I thought that would be yeah. ripping arms off, or because that you did a lot of that. Oh, yeah, that's right, cutting arms off. Or <laughs> arms and hands, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little bit of everything in Generation yeah. Hero. Um, so, Max, Mina's like just looking at you, and she's like, you should let go of me. You owe me. And if, why, why, you still haven't answered my question, he'll say as he starts loosening his grip, why, why are you doing this? I was, I was paid to a very good amount. And after the ones that I served turned out to be not worth serving at all, serving the rich is all I have left. So who are you serving now? She's going to require a persuasion to like a little bit more, or figure something out. I'll go with persuasion, sure. Okay. Uh -huh. and that is, persuasion is, sorry. Persuade is heart. 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 Don't you have something? So I <laughs> have heart. a, one, two, three, four, eight. So for eight, it is treated as a... 10 plus. Oh, nice. I am irresistible. irresistible. Uh -huh. Oh, yep. you, you irresistible rogue, you. Um, well, it says under promise of seduction, so obviously he will move his hands around as he's asking these questions. Oh, very seductive. <laughs> Didn't you guys like have a little relationship? Or, that, that was Merle. Yeah. That was Merle. Yeah. Merle. 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 Yeah. Merle. Which makes sense why she's here, just like thinking, did Merle hire her for a surprise <laughs> party? <laughs> well, guess what? She's like Merle Von Worm. Yeah, I figured. He's paying my bill. Well then, and he saw her get pulled out of the. Uh, yeah. He saw her get pulled out. Okay. <sighs> well, I have no. You'll owe me if I let you go. And he lets her go, and takes off towards the uh, the window. Whoa. All right. Which, if you're, I don't know if did she get did he get all the way out or did? Yeah, he's like get in all the air. Out? Yeah, she she's in the air. So the tango are. Well, Hauling her up there case, over the pool. I'm going to use my other hold to cross an impossible distance and make myself up with the Tengu. Yeah. And that'll be my last hold. So I'll be rolling from now on. So it just says to cross the distance uh, to any character outside my reach uh, and reach them before they have time to react. Whoa. All right. You so I'll be right up there. there with the Tengu. Hi, Max. In a nice... Say in a nice flash of lightning. Whoosh. Yes, you're right up there in the sky. Jesse, or Booker, you're there too. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know. I'm, I'm being dragged. Um, what are you doing? My pistol's already ready to fire, so I'm going to shoot at one of them. Okay. I try to take out one of these. You said I'm over the pool currently, correct? Yes. So if I fall, at least I'm falling in the water. I'll take that. Still going to hurt. Oh, of course it is. Uh, but that is a total of 11. Nice. Whoa, awesome. Uh, so, I'm going to inflict, uh, I'm, I'm going to take something from them, uh, their grip on me. Yeah, I was going to be like, I'm going to take myself from them. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Is, uh, it's allowed to 
crack of its like point blank range that it's going to startle one of them, but I'm going to shoot the other if there's two harm. Alright, I like it. You just fire the pistol up, they drop you, and you fall over and land right into the pool. <laughs> you can't involve off safely and not gonna oh, hit you. I'm sure hurt no matter what. I mean there's a lot of blood coming out of there when you when you manage to surface. Not not a pleasant sight, but you're alive. Yeah. Rafe, what are you doing? Um well, my quarry has been knocked out, so I'm going to head back over to check on the on the angel. Okay. So you dash outside. Mm-hmm. You see Parsons, and um, he's like just getting into the car. He's got the angel um, in the back. He's starting to come around to get the uh, get the gas going, or you know, he's he's dashing around to get into the driver's seat. Mm-hmm. When then. You hear a terrifying draconic roar. Merle. Yeah, coming down him from the side. And now you can definitely see the dragon inside of Merle. Like, there's scales, there's claws. It still looks sort of humanoid, but the dragon is truly out. Is rushing straight towards Parsons. Alright. Um, so with that, I'm going to... Yeah, why not? Just, I don't know if it'll help, but I'm going to spend the last two hold that I have to set up a shield on everyone, um, Parsons and Parsons and the Angel and myself, sort of adding plus one armor. Okay. All right, you get the shield up. I will say, just as like the fire breath rushes now, uh, the force knocks Parsons and you to the ground. But thanks to that shield, you are okay. Azra, what are you doing? And now there is a dragon. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to actually follow another instinct of mine to protect the valuable. I'm going to go directly at Merle. <laughs> I get too armored because I'm doing this. And this will help me. So, yeah, well. would this just be an unleash an attack, or can I do tear it down for this? It's probably an unleash an attack. All right. Five, two, that's a nine for me. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Which one are you, are you taking something from? Yeah, I'm going to put him in the choke hold and take away his ability to breathe fire. Whoa. All right, you get Merle in the headlock. And then, you're going to take some harm, or you're yourself in a bad spot? I think I'm in a bad spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're next to a dragon. <laughs> or it could take some harm. Your choice. Um... I will say it's in a bad spot, mm-hmm. which is that Merle is able to, like, these wings stretch out of his back. He's, like, beating them, and he slams you down and sort of gets, like, on top of you. Let's have you roll a keep your cool as he tries to claw and breathe fire and do some attacking on you. Uh, that's a eight. Okay. Uh, you get one level, or no, the armor. Two armor. Get two Whoa. Armor. Okay. One armor is gone. All right. So he does some damage. He's uh, not able to quite pierce your armor. Um, then, after he's like kind of put you down for a bit, he rears up, uh, and there is like fire coming out of his eyes and mouth, smoke boiling up from his nostrils, and he's like, um, I wish I had the time. I would stay here and put an end to you. Take more than a damn finger. But I gotta go. Got an angel I gotta take with me here. He goes into the car. He spins around. And he starts driving madly away. The Tengu swooping over to form a uh, a barrier that protects their escape. And unfortunately, thanks to this great tactic, as well as those uh, as well as those tang- Tengu. And maybe a little bit of dragon fire spat behind him. He is able to make it away with the angel captured. Afterwards, uh, everyone's like picking themselves up. You know, the police sirens are coming. Parsons like beckons um, you all to join him. I assume there's at least two dead tangs at this point. Then. Oh yeah, you've probably taken out a whole bunch of them. 
I need to pick myself out of this crater. <laughs> Help a little bit. I'm still just kind of looking at the, the, this cre- these creatures, this little these Tengu, just like, what Thank are you. these things? They're known as Tengu. Okay. Creatures from Japan, from China. Hmm. Japan. Japan. You met him in China? Yes. <laughs> met him in, I met him in China. A little confusing. Yes. yes. You were in China? I wore your new suit. I was. Sure. Oh, okay. I was in Shanghai for some time. During the Japanese occupation? A yes. little bit before. before. But actually, I mean, you might have stayed in there. I, I did stay for a Yeah, not a, not a fun time. time there. Yes, I, I popped in and out. <laughs> so the Tengu and are in yes. link with Merle. <laughs> yes, <clears throat> so it seems. So how do you all know Merle? He bit off my finger. Okay, yeah. I mean, like... We are... We have been on, alive for quite some time. Myself, because I, I spent some time in a place called uh, Shangri-La. You okay. actually made it to Shangri-La. Yes. How was uh, it been there? Quite peaceful. I wish I could have gone. Parsons, like, you've been to Shangri-La? Yes. Well, maybe you can help me. Mr. Wraith, there's so many secrets I don't know about you. <laughs> and all of you. I beg of you, I, I need you to help. Yes, I'm... Okay. I'm I want nervous. you to find out who took the... Or, well, we know who took the angel, but... There's a deep power inside of the angel. I yes, think he's definitely gained a lot more power since I last met him. Merle, Von Worm's gonna try and, I don't know, harvest it? I need what? you to look into this and, uh, and figure out what happened. Yes. Gaskins was doing some sort of incantation during this during the Gaskins? Encounter. Yes. So I don't know if it's related, but... He must have been trying to defend me. Gaskins, Grover's my friend. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Should I? Well, should. there's one way to find out for sure. Well, from what Ezra, I know, you he's load him in the back of my Hudson. Yeah. Very well. Gaskins. You are just taking. No, you are just kidnapping Grover Gaskins. And I no, what, what, him what, in the what, back. We're not. I am providing. Do you, do, you, do you currently see him in a state? He is not. We're not kidnapping him. We're taking him to a safe location where he can recover peacefully. You seem like you need to recover peacefully yourself, Miss. You got picked up and dropped in the pool. Yeah, I mean, I can handle it. <laughs> as, I t- as I pull out my flask and take a drink. I-, I can handle it. I can handle it. Parsons like, all right, well, I suppose. Mr. Parsons, I, from my interactions with him, he seems very power hungry. It might be so. Well, I don't know. I'll, I'll come with his, you. Well, his opinion of you is not very highly. He's always spoken to me in the most glowing terms. Perhaps in, uh, to your face, but I, I tend to learn that those who seek power tend to lie. Ooh. Either way, we can't be here for long. I'll, I'll go with you and we'll, we'll find some other place to talk this over before the police arrive. Well, we can always go to my club, but there's not enough room in my car, so you'll have to go. I have my own that's car. That's fair. Fine. I have a car, surprisingly. It's not very good. <laughs> oh. I also have a crappy car. You guys got some old like student maker or something. Oh, yeah. I have a decent car. Hmm, all right, that makes. I mean, that's good for yeah. a detective. You want something inconspicuous? I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. It's a very common make. Mm-hmm. Mine said comfortable, so I went with the Hudson Hornet. Yeah, that's yeah. a good choice. Because it's not exactly high luxury. It's just retro. Just, I, I feel yeah. like the car that I received was like back in 1933, so it's. It's quite old. Oh, you've had that one? That's, yeah, you've had that old, uh, old year liver. Old mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm it's a like classic. Wait. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember. I don't take it out very often. Alex Wright really doesn't actually have money, so he doesn't have a car. He, he just a, stole one? No, he has a bike. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> That's awesome. That's a lot easier to get a hold of. Yes. So, Parson says, all right, well, I'll go with you, and we'll see what we, what we know from this, what Gaskins is up to, but, um... I would say the perfect place to start because of the origin of these creatures would be Little Tokyo. Nice. And that is where we're in the next episode. To a close, except for a little ending moves here, of course. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll pick it up next time on Tuesday. Special guest, Kat, will be joining us, maybe Yay. playing another Aware. Yeah. So cool to get that. Another, uh, someone else joining in the mystery to figure out uh, why Von Worm kidnapped the angel and rescue her in an episode that will be called, named after another, or named after a famous L.A. landmark, Angel's Flight. 
We will see all of that when uh, Generation Shadow returns. But first, let's go around. Maybe we'll start with um, start with Wraith. Mm -hmm. So, do any factions go up or down? Do you think anybody owes you a debt, or do you owe anybody a debt? Um, I definitely think with the the actions of both Johnny and our dragon friend, Wild is going down. And I think powers might go up um, with sort of... Yeah, you're kinda, cause you were kind of helping out uh, Marjorie Parsons. Yeah. <clears throat> and then in terms of debts... Um... save the Parsons' lives, but at the same time, I didn't quite do the job that I was Okay, I can see that. I mean, I kind of did, but I didn't. Yeah, I mean, he still trusts uh, Gaskins. Yeah. Alright, I can see that. Um, how about... So, yeah, I would say they, they cancel each other out, so I don't know anything. Okay. So. Uh, how about Booker? Um... <sighs> Mainly because uh, we got attacked by a wild, it's probably gonna go down. Um, <laughs> it's fair. And my uh, knight's gonna go up. Mainly because of my interactions with Max King. Um, yeah, I can definitely see the relationship uh, yeah. blossoming there. It, it's definitely a weird thing, especially from book who's trying to keep you know out of everything. Uh, but as a per as a, a private investigator, uh, having a good working relationship with a lot of people in different places tends to be useful. Um, so I'm glad I, I got that Johnny Kappa debt as well. Uh, but as for debts uh, overall, I think I probably owe Max another one for um, yeah, same here. There. So I think you owe me two, and I owe you two. Nice. That's All fine. right. How about Max King? Well, I don't believe that any of his factions would go up or down, as his interactions with them are pretty much par for the course as how he's been through these last few years. Uh, as far as uh, any favors without redress, uh, even if it doesn't, if she wouldn't count it for Mina, for the um, let, I mean I did stop her, but then I didn't I let her go. But during that time, we shared a moment of intimacy whether it's physical or emotional. She owes me a debt and enters my web. Even though she was already there, so I'll just hmm. add an additional debt for for Mina. Okay. For letting her get away and yeah, kind of letting her uh, so to make make the right choice there. I wasn't saying it was the right choice. It was the choice <laughs> he made. True. All right. Does that cover uh, cover Max there? That it does. Okay. How about Azra? Well, I would drop down the squids, but I'm not even sure they have a faction. Uh, they're with wilds, I guess. They, I have like two yeah. wilds in this one. Right, so wilds going down. And I guess I'll bring power up. Mostly because they tried to protect me, Angel. Failed. And now I feel like I have a purpose to fulfill in protecting things. Like that. I got attacked by wilds. As for Depths, I it think I will rate for Depths, since he kind of helped me make up my decision. Yeah, to so like yeah I can definitely see that for a little bit. Oh, Wraith, at least, helped you make the right choice. Good. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure why I punched Gaskin in the face, but I think it was the right decision. I definitely think it was the right decision. Good. Yeah, a good influence, you know? Yeah. <laughs> when a friend tells you to punch a weird <laughs> wizard man, always, <laughs> always agree. He's not yeah, waking up next for... Time. <laughs> <laughs> he is not waking up. Those punching wizards, yeah. <laughs> We're talking about punching weird wizards. Punch wizard those weird dudes. wizards. And uh, with that, I can Cast bring... fist. Yeah. <laughs> Stone fist. Stone, Stone, Stone fist. fist. <laughs> we'll bring this episode to a close. We'll see you for episode two, chapter two, Angel's Flight, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Oh next, Tuesday. next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. We will be back. It's uh, Tuesday's the 15th, we right? Get, we didn't get to make sure. it. Sure. Sounds yeah, good. It's coming up. It's coming up. No worries. 15th. I thought he changed the song. You're getting all old and stuff, Mark. Yeah.
All right. Well, Damn. thanks everybody for stopping in. Uh, awesome. Thanks for the raid. Never split the party. Thanks for the host. Appreciate that. Um, Appreciate it really. Appreciate yep. it. Thank you for not splitting the party. Yes, that's that's always a good. <laughs> Which we actually didn't this time. I know, you know? surprisingly. <laughs> but uh, Nico Mimi, too. Thank you so much for the host. Thank you. And always thanks for stopping by, Londell. Uh, awesome seeing you on your game night. To swing by for the last Thank few you. minutes to Thank see you. what's up. So, um, just play a bunch of games, guys, um, or do whatever you want to do. Uh, I'll take this but one. make sure and pull up a chair and, and make time, time to tabletop. Table we'll see you next Tuesday. Yeah, we got that on the dot. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Good night, everyone.